Okay, in this video today, I want to show you how an electronic throttle actuator works. I have a throttle body here, and in this throttle body, we have the throttle plate that opens and closes, and that, of course, controls the amount of air that goes into an engine, and therefore controls the RPM of that engine. Today, I want to take this apart and show you what it looks like on the inside so you can see how this works, and I want to show you the diagram so you can see what each of these electrical terminals are connected to and how it's controlled by the computer. And I'll also show you a waveform that shows how the computer is actually controlling this motor. So on the older cars, before the early 2000s, they were all controlled by cables. So the accelerator pedal was connected to the throttle plate with a cable, and when the driver stepped on the accelerator pedal, it pulled the throttle open, allowing air to flow in. When the driver removed his foot from the pedal, a spring pulled the throttle back closed again. Now today, the same process occurs, except we have a motor inside of here that drives the throttle plate. So if I pull this off of here, I've removed the, the four screws here that hold this cover on. If I pull this off, you'll see that inside I have a motor. The motor sits right inside of here. It's just a brushed DC motor, and it has a gear on the end, and this gear drives this black plastic gear, which then drives this final gear here that is connected to the throttle plate. You'll see that that moves with the throttle plate. You'll also notice that this has a spring in it, and that spring in this case, and I don't understand why it does this, or why they chose this, but this spring causes the throttle to default to the open position. I've seen other throttle bodies like this that have the spring that defaults to the closed position. Now if you look closely at this motor, here are the two terminals. It has a positive and a negative terminal. And in the housing here, you'll see that these two terminals connect to that. And those two terminals will lead directly to the connector here where it plugs into the harness on the vehicle. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to connect 12 volts to this motor. I'll apply a ground to the left side and a power to the right side. And you'll see that it spins. And of course, when you reverse that, like any DC motor, it will spin again, but this time it will go in the opposite direction. So if we take this gear and put it back on here, now when I apply voltage to this, 0 volts on this side and 12 volts on this side, you'll see that it moves that throttle plate. If I turn this to the side, you can see the throttle. And if I reverse this, so that the ground is on this side, and the 12 volts is on this side, it moves the opposite direction. So I'll have to push this slightly closed and, and be ready for that to move. You'll see that pops that open when I apply that. So that's how that motor moves the throttle plate. Now you'll notice there's one other part of this that I want you to see. There is a potentiometer in here. It fits over the end of this shaft and that shows us the throttle position. So that's the throttle position sensor. This has actually two potentiometers built into it for redundancy. And I'll show you that in just a minute on the wiring diagram. I can't take it apart and show you that as this moves back and forth, it changes the amount of resistance in this circuit so that a computer can know whether or not the throttle plate responded and moved when it was commanded to. Looking at this electrical diagram, we can see how the throttle body connects to the vehicle. So here's the throttle body, and here are the six terminals that we saw on the housing of the throttle body and they all connect to the powertrain control module. You'll notice that this brown wire and this yellow wire are the two wires that are responsible for providing power and ground to the motor. They call this the M positive and M negative control wires, but don't let that fool you. The computer can apply a power to this wire and a ground to this one, or vice versa, a ground here and a power here to make that motor run in either direction. And then the other four wires are connected to the potentiometers. You'll notice that these potentiometers share what's called a low reference or a ground. So this gray wire right here provides the ground for both of these sensors. And this light gray wire provides the 5 volts for both sensors. And the green wire is the sensor signal for the first sensor. This purple wire is the sensor signal voltage for the second sensor. And as that throttle position sensor moves in there, these wipers move across the potentiometer. And if the computer determines that the signals from both sensors agree with each other, then it lets everything work. But the minute that one of those sensor signals doesn't agree with the other one, the powertrain control module will store a DTC and it will go into limp mode. But the functionality of this throttle is limited until a repair is made. 
Now let's connect a lab scope to these two wires right here and let's see what the computer is doing to control this motor. We'll connect channel A to the M positive control wire and channel B to the M negative control wire and we'll combine the two grounds at the negative battery terminal. So really we're measuring the voltage at each one of these compared to ground. So here's the waveform we got as a result of hooking it up like this and starting the car. So this is where the car started and letting it idle for a few seconds. Now as we zoom in closer, you can see that initially the voltage is lower, but that's just because the car is starting and then the charging system begins to work somewhere in this area where the voltage goes up to about 14 volts. Any time that the voltages are both the same, they're both at about battery voltage right here, the motor is not being moved. But any time on channel B or the M negative wire, the voltage is pulled down to zero. So now there's a difference in voltage right here, a 12 volt difference in voltage between the two terminals. That is the computer opening the throttle. And you'll notice we zoom out, the red section is where the computer is opening the throttle. Then the blue section over here is where the computer is closing the throttle or working against the spring. Remember the spring on this throttle body is working to keep the throttle open. Anytime the computer pulls down the voltage on the blue channel, which is the M positive wire on the circuit, and pulls those voltages apart, it's actually working to close the throttle. You'll see as the car is idling, so in this section over here, the computer is actually just maintaining the idle at a certain RPM and it's got a constant duty cycle where it's just pulling the voltage down periodically to keep that throttle in position to maintain the idle RPM that it wants. So I thought this waveform was kind of cool because it shows us how the computer is controlling that motor and keeping the throttle in exactly the position that it wants it to be in. So that's how it works. I hope that this helped to kind of demystify an electronic throttle actuator. It's not really as mysterious as it might first seem. It's quite simple actually when you look at the parts inside of it and then when you understand how the computer is controlling it. And I also hope that by understanding it that it makes it easier for you to diagnose problems with the throttle actuator when you have them.